Amigo, shout out Zay, tell me one time. Yeah. Versace, Versace, Medusa head on me like I'm Numenati. What's going on, YouTube? Goody Two Shoes back with another video for you guys. And today, I'm bringing you guys another episode of the podcast. Like I promise, it is Wednesday. Um, this episode might be a little shorter because there hasn't been much that's gone on since Saturday when I uploaded my last one. Um, mostly just NBA playoffs updates. And then I actually have a story to tell you guys. Um, it, it does relate to sports. And then this is like a gaming themed channel. So I'm actually going to talk a little bit. I'm not going to get too in depth about it, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the new Call of Duty trailer that just came out. So let's get right into it and let's start talking about the NBA playoffs. So um, last time I predicted that the Heat were going to beat the Hornets in a close one and that the Raptors were going to beat the Pacers in a close one. Well, I got the winners of both of those games correct. So the Heat beat the Hornets and then the Raptors beat the Pacers. The Raptors and the Pacers was a close game, so I was right. And the Heat in the Hornets game was an absolute blowout, so I wasn't right on that one, but I did get the team right that won. Um, but now, I guess I'm going to give you my predictions for those two, or for that series, because I didn't give you a prediction for that one. Um, so I think that the Heat are probably going to beat the Raptors in um, six games. I guess it could go to a seventh game. Um, it could be a, a five-game series, it could be a seven-game series, but I think I'm going to go with the six-game series. Heat winning 4-2 to two in the end, um, and then my prediction was the Cavs would beat the Hawks, so the Cavs and the Heat would play in the Eastern Conference Finals, and that would be something. So, and something to come out of the Heat situation is now uh, Chris Bosh, well I guess not him, but he does want to play, he is healthy, he says, and he's willing to take the risks of further health problems, I guess you would say. But he says he's healthy and he, he wants to play, but the Heat will not let him play just because they don't want to be like liable for anything, for playing him too soon or whatever. And then um, they just want to make sure he's fully healthy for next year and he's good to go instead of um, playing him in the playoffs, him getting injured or uh, doing something bad to his health and then him being out all of next year too. So I do understand both sides of it, but it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if you think you're healthy enough, then I guess you can play whatever. So the NFL player or the NFL, the NBA players association is scheduling a meeting with the heat. And I don't know exactly what that's going to resolve. I've never even heard of anything like that. Um, but apparently they're scheduling a meeting with the Miami heat, like organization trying to, get um, Chris Bosh to, to play again in the playoffs. And honestly, as a Cavs fan, as a LeBron fan, that really worries me because I think that the Heat, I don't know, I don't I don't think the Hornets were really a great test. I don't, if they, if Kemba's on, then they're on. And if Kemba's off, they're off. So Kemba's basically like their heart and soul of that team. They flow how he flows. So, um to be honest, I think they struggled a little more than they should have with the Hornets. And then the Raptors, I think they'll beat the Raptors. Not saying that the Raptors are a bad team at all, but they have struggled so far in the playoffs. They've been very inconsistent. So if they beat the Raptors convincingly, then that worries me. Plus, if Chris Bosh comes back, that's just another all-star type player that they have to add to Dwayne Wade, Hassan Whiteside. And I know Joe Johnson and Lew Dang and Goran Dragic aren't all-star players, but they're they're not your basic role players. Joe Johnson and Lou Aldang might be role players, but they have a lot of skill. They've been good in the past. Goran Dragic has proved in the past couple of games that he can play. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely worries me as a Cavs fan. Uh, but I, I do think that our team as the Cavs, I think that we have a very good shot at reaching the NBA Finals. And honestly, I think we have a good shot of beating whoever comes out of the West, whether it be Oklahoma City, San Antonio, um, Portland's a very big long shot, or um, Golden State. I think Golden State would be our toughest matchup, obviously. Uh, I think we could blow through Oklahoma City, just because in the regular season, we absolutely dominated them um, at their 
at their arena too. So on the road, we we beat them by like 20 points or something, and um, none of the stars played in from either team played in like the at, at all in the fourth quarter. So uh, that was a pretty big blowout. And San Antonio, I think we beat them once when we played them this year, and then they beat us once. So San Antonio doesn't worry me as much as Golden State. Neither team really worries me because LeBron's going to make it to the NBA Finals either way. You guys can say whatever you want down in the comments, talk your shit, whatever. It's not going to affect me at all because LeBron gets all the shade and the hate in the world anyway. So it's whatever. I'll stop talking about LeBron, but I do think that the Heat will beat the Raptors and play the Cavs in the final in the Eastern Conference Finals. And hopefully from there the Cavs prevail. Um, the Cavs did win their first game against the Hawks. They were up like 18 or 19 points. And I was watching it, and they the Hawks just kept getting back into it and crawling back and back and back, closer and closer. And they brought it to like a three-point game. And I was sitting downstairs watching the game, and I was like, this is not good. This is not good. They're coming back. It's a three-point game. And my sister was sitting there, and she was like, oh, it's fine. It's a three-point game. It's fine. It's not fine. And then they came back and tied it up and eventually took the lead. And it was a battle down the stretch, and eventually the best closer in the game, closed it out for us, and uh, we got the win. So we're up 1-0 in the series. Game 2 is tonight. Last night, the uh, Golden State Warriors beat the Trailblazers. I think the Blazers were up like um, 11 going into the fourth quarter, and Damian Lillard laid a goose egg in the fourth quarter, and they got beat by 11, I think. So I think they were outscored by 22 in the fourth quarter. Um, that's... Uh, that's that's kind of a choke, I guess. I don't I don't know. I didn't watch the game, so I didn't. I don't have much to say about that, but I do think that it's a it's a team effort, and the Trailblazers don't really have anything other than C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard for scoring. Um, they got like big guys that can rebound, but that's about it. They don't really have a small forward that can shoot. They don't have a power forward that can shoot. Um, so they pretty much just have rebounders surrounding Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. And then they have like guards off the bench or whatever. But I just don't think that they... I, I said that the, it would be a six-game series, but without Steph and they lost both games, I honestly don't think that it's looking too good for the Blazers to make it a six-game series. I think it'll either be a sweep or a gentleman's sweep, giving um, giving the Trailblazers one game. Um I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of watching Western Conference games just because I don't watch Western Conference. I'm not a fan of a Western Conference team. Um, I I honestly don't think that they play any defense. And people that say that the Warriors play the best defense in the NBA it drives me nuts because they allow like 110 points a game. They'll win 130 to 110, and they're like, man, the Warriors' defense was solid tonight. No, it wasn't. They allowed 110 points. They won by 20, yes, but they scored 130. Like, that's not good defense. In the Eastern Conference, we've got games that are like 80 and 90 points every night. That's because we play defense, not because we're terrible. People can say whatever they want about the uh, Eastern Conference being awful and being worse than the Western Conference. But right now, if you look at the standings, our eight seed, which was the Detroit Pistons, would be a five seed in the Western Conference above Portland, Memphis, Dallas, and Houston. Yeah, no, yeah, I know none of those teams are fantastic, but you always talk about the Western Conference being such a powerhouse. They had three good teams at the top that were well, they had two really good teams at the top, and then they had Oklahoma City and the Clippers, who were, like, good teams, and they'd probably be, like, top three in the East. And then you've got San Antonio, and I think San Antonio would blossom in the Eastern Conference just because they do play a ton of really good defense, team defense, team basketball all around. Um, I think they'd be very good in the Eastern Conference. They They almost play like an Eastern Conference team in the Western Conference, in my opinion. But... Yeah, I think that um, the the Eastern Conference top to bottom is more like tighter matchups, and in the Western Conference, it's going to be blowouts until like the NBA playoffs. So um, I can't wait until the finals and see. Um, did I just say the NBA playoffs? Like my mind's just going five places right now. 
Um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, in the Western Conference that the teams are very unevenly matched until like the Western Conference Finals. That's what I meant by that. And then in the Eastern Conference, all the matchups are pretty good. I, I hate, one thing about ESPN that I hate is that they'll be on like first take, his and hers, even Sports Center sometimes will talk about it. But they always say, who from the Western Conference is going to meet LeBron and the Cavs in the finals? That absolutely drives me nuts because they're just making the standards so high for LeBron to make the play or make the finals that if he were to play, if there was a team that was like 82 and 0 in the East, and he were, they would still say who's going to be the team to beat LeBron, not who's going to beat the team to beat the 82 and 0 team. That drives me nuts, and they've done it this year about the Warriors too. And it doesn't drive me nuts because I don't like the Warriors and they always talk about the Warriors, it drives me nuts because they're basically saying that nobody in the Western Conference for this sake and Eastern Conference for the LeBron sake, that nobody is good enough to beat either of these teams. So it's just a foregone conclusion that these two teams are going to meet in the in the finals. Yes, the probability that the Warriors and the Cavs are going to meet in the finals is very high, and that's probably like the highest pr- probability of a matchup. But... Why do we even play the playoffs? And if you're just going to talk about who's going to meet the Cavs in the in the finals or who's going to meet the Warriors in the finals, that doesn't make any sense to me, and I hate it. But that's just, I guess, how Sports Center, ESPN, whatever, how it, that whole organization works. If you want to call them an organization, um, they always get one the team at the top of that sport. They always get that team and just ride them for as long as they can, and that's all they talk about. In the NFL, it's the Patriots, and this past year it was the the Patriots and the Panthers because the Panthers were undefeated, and then this year it's the Warriors and in the NBA. And last flipping decade, it's been LeBron and the Cavs in the East. They just ride LeBron and the Cavs the entire season. If one little thing comes out about the Cavs or the or the Warriors this year, they've got to throw it in somewhere. Steph Curry, whatever. That's just how they work. Um, I've complained about that a lot with the whole Steph Curry thing. And as a LeBron fan, people are probably thinking like, geez, you're ignorant, you, you, uh, you're a hypocrite, whatever. And no, it's not that at all. I understand that they did that with LeBron. I don't like that they did it with LeBron either. Obviously, I liked when they talked about LeBron, but I hated the, the fact that they would always throw LeBron stats in somehow. It just drove me nuts. Like, Especially with the Steph Curry most outstanding or most improved player this year, they said C.J. McCollum won it, and then they just put on the bottom line, Steph Curry comes in fourth. What about the guys that are second and third place? I don't even want to get into that because it just drives me nuts. Um, our next topic is going to be, um, what did I say? Oh, I got a story for you guys. It's along the, along the lines of basketball. So I, two weeks ago now, a little over two weeks ago, I was playing basketball with my brother-in-law and a, and a couple of buddies that are his age. So they're in their 20s, one's mid-20s, one's early 20s, and then I'm 18, and I play basketball with them. So I'm normally a post, because I'm six foot, and the other guy, one of the other guys, the taller guy, is like six one. so I always guard him in the post, and then there's two shorter guys who always play the guards, and they're quicker. So, and I... Personally, I think I'm quicker than the other post, so sometimes there's a, an off matchup there. If I play like a, a high post and I get the ball, I'll just take him to the rim, whatever. So the other day, we were playing basketball, and we lowered the hoops to either eight or nine feet so that everybody could dunk. If, if they were open, they could dunk, but like the bigger post, we could dunk even if we weren't guarded or, what, or even if we were guarded, whatever. So... We lowered the hoops, and I was just trying to block everything that came towards the rim. And so I was, I got thrown onto a guard, first of all. So I got thrown into the guard spot. So um, I was a little unmatched, so I just backed off a little bit. And I was just going, I was just playing the lane, going for the blocks, whatever. So this guy that we're playing with drives in on me, and he's like a master of spinning the ball off the backboard and into the, into the hoop. So if he gets in the lane, he's he pump fakes a lot too. So he, he's got everything down once he gets into the paint. So he comes in the paint and puts one up, and I tried to pin it on the glass, and I, I didn't pin it on the glass, but that's not the problem. The problem is I came down from jumping on his foot. His foot was laying on the ground like normal. 
and the, the outside of my left foot landed on top of his foot and all the pressure of me falling straight down from there came down on the side of my foot and so I just figured like I twisted my ankle whatever I'm fine so I it was like our first game of a best of five series and so I got up and I started to walk it off and it hurt still I couldn't make like sharp movements or cuts on it so I was like oh whatever it's fine it'll get better and it did get better as we started playing more and more games and we finished the series and my team won and then we started playing like a little bit of catch with a football right after that running around and it was fine so then I had to drive home after that and on my drive home I was just driving home in the car and I got home it was like a 20 25 minute um, drive so I got home and tried to get out of my car and I could not move my left foot like it it wouldn't I couldn't walk on it couldn't put any pressure on it couldn't move it and so I was like, oh, great, this is not good. I got all tight in the car, and now I can't move it, can't move it, can't walk on it, can't do anything. So I was a little, I was like, I'll go inside and ice it then. So I go inside, and I ice it right away, and I prop it up, whatever, do everything that you're supposed to do. And it started feeling better after, like, two or three days. It didn't feel better that day or the next day. And a couple of days later, it started feeling okay. So then... I was like, all right, I'm fine, whatever. So I went to Walmart, and I was looking at, like, ankle braces with my mom, and she was like, I don't know which one you need. And I didn't know either. I've never hurt my ankles before. So I didn't know if I needed one with, like, a a side support or, or like, a just a normal brace or whatever. So I just waited, and my dad, my dad has never wanted to go to the doctor. He always says he'll be fine, whatever. Classic dad. So... Like, the next day, my dad was like, do you think you need to see a doctor about this? And I was like, no, I'm just fine. Like, normally I'll go to a doctor if I think I need to. But I was like, no, I think I'm just fine. I think I just turned my ankle, maybe sprained it. It'll get better if I don't do anything on it. So then last week, it felt perfectly fine. And so I went and played. I went to go play basketball again. And I just wrapped my ankle with, like, athletic tape, you know like pre-wrap and then athletic tape. And so I just wrapped it up, went to go play basketball, and it started to hurt while I was playing basketball. So I was like, all right, I'll just tone it back a little bit. I'll just stand here and shoot. I won't really go in for dunks or drives, whatever. I'll just hang out here. So I started doing that, and I got home, and it hurt really bad that night. And I woke up the next morning, and it hurt so bad I wanted to just cut it off. So I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, I think I need to go to the doctor but I didn't have a doctor. So, uh, like my personal doctor, I just turned 18 like last summer and I haven't switched over to a new or to an adult doctor from like a pediatrician. So I switched over. Actually, I had an appointment to like meet a new doctor, but he didn't have anything till June. And this happened like last week. So I called the doctor and asked if I could get in and see somebody. And they said they, could work me in, which means that I don't have like an appointment, so I'm gonna have to wait for a while. So I went down and got my x ray right away and then came back up to the doctor and he was like, Yeah, there's there's not much wrong on your x ray, there's just a broken bone or there's just a chip in your bone. And I was like, Okay, that doesn't sound like good at all, but whatever. So I, I was like, Maybe I just sprained it and then like I chipped my bone or something. I don't know. It was super weird. So he was like, but I called one of the foot doctors um, in our building and I asked him if he wanted to look at it or if I should just have, if I should just wrap it up and you can go home. And he it was like, this foot doctor really wants to check this out for you. And, and I'm assuming he's going to put you in a walking boot and send you home. And I was like, that's not good at all. And my mom started freaking out. So I was... I waited for like 45 minutes to see that first doctor and then I went over to see the foot doctor I checked in and me and my mom were there and we waited for like an hour hour and a half and it was ridiculous so finally we get called back there and the doctor seemed like it, I was his last patient of the day and then he was heading home and so he like showed me this x-ray and I had a break in the in my ankle bone I broke all the way through my ankle bone and like, I could still walk on it, so that's why I was super confused. I played basketball, and I walked on it. I don't understand why it didn't hurt more, and I could walk on it if it was broken and not, like, sprained or or fractured or whatever. So I asked him about that, and he was like, well, 
if you break the bone that you broke, if you break that bone, um, I didn't break break like my whole ankle. I broke like a bone on the side of my ankle, and he was like, if you break just this bone on the side of your ankle, you can still walk, but it's very painful. So that explains why I was able to walk and everything. So now for the next six weeks of my life, I'm in this massive, unattractive walking boot. And it's a super big pain. And my ankle still hurts sometimes when I stand on it too much. So moral of the story is, I guess I don't really have a moral of the story because I never had ankle problems before. But be careful when you're playing basketball. We'll say that's the moral of the story. Be careful when you're playing basketball. Don't just be super reckless. Watch where you're coming down, I guess. I don't know. I guess there wasn't really anything I could do to prevent it. I was just playing hard. Um, but yeah, it really sucks because right now the weather here is getting super nice outside. And I can't go outside and play basketball. And I really wanted to like get a, a nice camera and set it up at the park where we play and like record some of our gameplay of us balling sometimes or us like having a dunk contest or whatever. And now I can't do that because I can't play basketball. But hopefully it's, it's my ankle's supposed to be healed like June first or so, or maybe a little after that. Uh, I'm supposed to go for a checkup like next week and see if it's been, if it's progressing correctly. So in, in three or four weeks, four or five weeks, I guess, I'm supposed to be healed fully, hopefully, and then I could start playing basketball again. Let me know if you guys think it'd be awesome to for me to like record us playing basketball. I think it'd be cool. I think you guys would enjoy watching it, so let me know if you guys would enjoy that. Um, it just sucks that I can't do it now, because it's nice out. It's not super hot and humid. It's like perfect. But I can't play outside. Um, that kind of sucks. So all I've been doing really is staying inside, playing Call of Duty, um, watching YouTube videos. Basically, I like I can still work um, my cleaning job. I that's like my main job right now is I clean for my sister. She has her own cleaning company, so I like clean for some of her clients. Um, but I can still do that. It just blows because I can't uh, be outside like I want to be. But yeah, um, that leads me to, I guess, the next thing of talking about the new Call of Duty trailer, and it's there were rumors that it was going to be in space, and then there were rumors recently that it was going to be boots to the ground, and I am one that likes boots to the ground. I really like Black Ops 3. I don't, like, I love the movement system. I love being able to slide and having at least some boost. I hated Advanced Warfare Exo movements just because you could be in the air and then dash down to the ground really fast. And in Black Ops 3, you can't do that. You just float in the air all the way to the ground. So it's easier to get killed, but you are also trying to avoid them anyway. So you're using your abilities to your advantage, I guess, um, if you understand what I'm saying there. That might have been a little confusing to follow, but I do like the Black Ops 3 movement. Um, but I would rather have boots to the ground than in space. And the trailer revealed pretty much that it was going to be in space. And I'm not really a big fan. Um, if you guys want to see a video explaining, in my opinion, perfectly what I think about it and a lot, what a lot of people think, check out United Gaming Community. I'll find his link and I'll put it in the description below. He just made a video last night about it. And it is absolutely spot on. It's perfect. He's got like... The perfect little touch of like business side to it, plus his own point of view. So it's super cool. I'm going to link it in the, in the description. You guys need to go check that out. He's a really cool dude, so subscribe if you want if you uh, want to see like more of his videos and stuff. But he's really cool. He made an awesome video on it yesterday, and you guys should definitely check it out. That's, that's like exactly what I think. I can't say it any better than he did. He did like an amazing job of just taking everything into account and factoring in all sorts of different things. It's just perfect. It's exactly what I think, and I couldn't have said any better myself. So if you if you want to hear a little bit more about the Advance, or the Infinite Warfare um, trailer release or whatever, go check out that dude's channel. I'll link it in the, in the description, and the, the, it's, it's a really good video. So I think that's pretty much all I have for today. 
it's been about 25, 25 minutes, I think. So um, a little bit shorter, like I said. Um, but definitely, I did the other day, uh, two days ago, I think, two or three days ago, I uploaded my first Call of Duty video to this channel. So make sure you check that out. Um, it's not like amazing. It's just like a, it's just me talking over a theater commentary. It's a, it's a good video though, because there, there is a nice surprise towards the end of the video, I think. Um, it's pretty sweet though. You should definitely check it out and I'll definitely be recording more Call of Duty soon. Once I get my internet fixed at my house, it's been going in and out recently. So I can't really record live gameplay and then upload it because it takes too long in my internet. For some reason, my internet works for like 30 minutes and then you have to reset it and then it works for 30 minutes and then it shuts off until you reset it again and then it works for another 30 minutes. So it's super annoying because it's not enough time for me to record the, the gameplay, make sure it's good and well, not, not great because what I'm doing right now is I'm using PSN Share and that kind of sucks because I'm not able to like put my own editing touch and effects on it. But once I get my Elgato, it'll all be perfect. Um, but it's it's at least a Call of Duty video up for you guys. I hate doing that because I want it to be, I don't want it to be like I have to put up a video for you guys. And it, I just, it's not qual quantity over quality. It, for me, it's quality over quantity. Um, but right now, I wanted to get a Call of Duty video up so bad for you guys. And I think it'd be, it was fun for myself. So you should definitely check that out as well as checking out the rest of the videos on my channel. Hopefully I'll be playing some Slither.io if that's how you say it. I don't know. I've seen so many videos of it, but I don't know how to say it. I don't know if it's Slither.io, Slither.io, Slitherio. I don't know what it is. Slither. We'll just call it Slither. I'm going to be playing that Slithery, Slithery, Snakey Snake game. Um, pretty soon I think I'll be uploading a video of that onto my channel because it does look fun. Um, and a lot of people are doing it, so why not catch that wave, right? Uh, but yeah, check out all the videos on my channel, especially that Call of Duty one. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the podcast. Make sure you like for to show your support. Comment what your awesome feedback is, especially on the whole basketball thing. If you want me to record that this summer and toss it up, I think it'd be kind of fun. I could make it like a, a like sped up and play some music in the background so you aren't just sitting there watching live basketball or whatever. I would definitely slow it down if there was like a sick dunk or a sick play or whatever because that'd be awesome. But let me know what you think about that. Comment whatever else you want to see on this channel or what you what you think about the podcast or whatever. Comment any ideas you have for next week's podcast because it, I really would love to use your guys' suggestions for the podcast. And make sure you subscribe because this podcast is coming out every Wednesday, every once a week, every Wednesday. I hope it'll be every Wednesday and very consistent. If not, I'll be tweeting out to let you guys know. Follow me on Twitter at goody2shoes0147. It's right here on your screen for you. Just type that into Twitter. And I always tweet out like whether or not the podcast is going to go up that day or not. Um, so make sure you subscribe to see more of this podcast and more videos just in general. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. It has been your boy Goody2shoes, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Ain't no me. I'm telling you I got it. Anybody thinking different gonna get it? Futurist to be that nigga killing every single city, grabbing titties even if they itty bitty, leaving niggas shitty, drinking. Think I need another kidney? If you with me, say hell yeah.